Howdy folks, welcome back to the Steampunk Desperado channel. The place where we talk about news and reviews of sci-fi, fantasy, anime, cartoons sometimes, and most specifically the wonderful, wonderful genre we call steampunk. Recently, I did a segment on my picks for the top 10 steampunk themed anime. And a lot of them were in many ways like historical fantasy. At the time I had not encountered this one however, the one I'm going to talk about today, which is very sad that I missed it from there. It's primarily historical but it does have some steampunk elements and I think steampunk fans will really really love it. It's called Golden Kamui. We found it Mrs. Desperado and I are always looking for interesting and quirky shows to watch. We found it on a list of top 10 underappreciated anime, and it definitely uh, fit the bill. I immediately love the historical, the historical setting. It's set back in 1905 or 6 or so, just after the Russo-Japanese War of 1904 to 1905. And the action all happens on the island of Hokkaido, which is the farthest north island in the Japanese chain. Although at the time, I believe at the time, Japan also ruled part of Sakhalin, which is now ruled by Russia. And these were some of the lands that they were fighting over at the time. And there's a kind of a wild west feel to, feel to it. In fact, it even was mentioned in Wikipedia that it was considered a Japanese-style western. And so that's another reason to love it for somebody who, like me, is a fan of westerns. And there's a lot of those, a lot of those parallels which I will get into later. Like most animes, uh, Golden Kamui started out its existence as a manga series uh, of the same name, and this, in this case the author, a guy named Satoru Noda, who is not, who was not very well known before Golden Kamui, and he's kind of a recluse. He didn't even show up for some of the awards that the manga won. Uh, he had his, his agent or his editor read the acceptance speech. And Noda both wrote and illustrated the manga. And he has a lot of connection to the setting. He was born and raised in Hokkaido. And he, his great-grandfather fought in the Russo-Japanese War and and Noda even named one of the characters after his great-grandfather, the immortal Sugimoto. And we'll get more into that later. Besides Kamui, the only other major thing that Noda has done is sports manga, which is something I very rarely watch. And so, it's, uh, this is something that is, it kind of came out of the blue for him, but it, it really earned him a lot of accolades. Kamui involves a large number of fascinating and quirky characters, uh, including, of course, Immortal Sugimoto, who I mentioned. He's got that nickname because he was in the war and he had all these brushes with death and he would just always survive. He'd, he'd get wounded and he has all the scars on his forehead to prove it, but he, he never seems to get killed. And so he's got this legendary, legendary uh, reputation. And so he's basically kind of hanging around Hokkaido, which is, was close to the war front, and he meets this young Ainu girl named Sirpa. Now the Ainu are the original inhabitants of Japan. A lot of Americans don't know this. They were, there are not many of them left, unfortunately. Most of them have kind of inter, intermingled with the Japanese, but they have a lot of resemblance to Europeans, such that uh, anthropologists used to think they were this group of Europeans who somehow got over to Japan, and they've got like the men have thick beards, and so they don't they look quite different than the Japanese. Although genetic studies have shown that they are actually are are more closely closely related to people of India, believe it or not. So these Ainu, they're a, tri they're a tribal society, and it's, the word is Japanese for hairy <laughs> because of the beards. And they're into hunting and gathering and all that, and they live in, in, in tents. And 
a serpa is, they don't say, they call her a little girl, but you assume she's probably around 16 because of the things she does. She hunts, she even kills bear <laughs> with her bow and arrow. She's very talented. She's a rebel because in Ainu society, women aren't supposed to hunt. They're supposed to get married and tend the fields. And, uh, and it's weird because when they get married, they have this, this tattoo, this like colored tattoo around their lips, <laughs> which you see in the other female characters in the show. Another thing, Asirpa is, well, Asirpa is also an orphan uh, of sorts. Her mother died, her father disappeared, may or may not be alive, and she's looking for a treasure, that, that this gold that belonged to the Ainu people that they've they been collecting. And uh, a, an outsider stole this, murdered a bunch of the Ainu men, and uh, that's, she thinks that may have been what happened to her father, she's not sure. And so she was raised by her grandmother. And so she wants to find this treasure for her people. She doesn't want the money for herself, just for her people. The name Golden Kamui, of course, refers to the treasure. Kamui is an Ainu word meaning God or Spirit. And it's a lot like the Japanese word Kami, which probably came from the same place. The Ainu are animists, animists. They see supernatural beings in everything, like in mountains, in the trees, in the, in the, in the bear, in the foxes, in, in the birds, and the sea. Now, it turns out that Aserpa is not the only one who's seeking the treasure. In the nearby Akibahara prison, I'll have to correct that if I get it wrong, uh, there's an inmate who knew the location of this treasure, probably one of the villains, uh, who stole it. And in an effort to break out, he makes a deal with the other prisoners, saying, uh, we're going to go out and get this treasure together. So he tattoos clues on the skins of these other men. And there's quite a number of them, a dozen or more, I'm not sure how many. And it's, it's maybe a map, maybe a code, it's hard to tell. And a bunch of them escape and go about looking for the treasure. Although, as far as we know, Noparabo, who this guy is known as, is still in prison. And, of course, this treasure, this unimaginable wealth, causes them to start killing each other. Uh, and because they don't want to share it, they kill their fellow escapees and they take their skins. <laughs> One of the kind of un unsavory aspects of the show, uh, but it's 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 not it's not for the faint-hearted, but it's a great adventurous show. There's also the Japanese Seventh Division, who are stationed in Hokkaido, and this particular lieutenant knows about the, the stories of the treasure, and he's looking for those prisoners too, trying to find their skins, and uh, and he's willing to kill people as well. I really enjoy making the comparisons with with Kamui and your typical American Western um, movie or novel. There's Sugimoto is he's the disenchanted war veteran, usually the Civil War in the case of American. Uh, American uh, novel, and he's scarred, literally, he's got scars all over his face, and he's tr just trying to forget and make a new life for himself. Asirpa is the Native American maiden, and she's got the wisdom of her people, and she imparts it at great detail to Sugimoto as they travel around uh, trying to find the treasure and, and looking for other inmates, although they are, they have a conscience, and they don't murder people, they will kill in self-defense, of course, but they make artistic copies of the tattoos rather than, you know, when they, when they don't have to kill somebody. The stolen treasure, of course, is, a, is an element in a lot of Westerns, and there's the violent criminals, <laughs> and evil prison wardens, and uh, corrupt army officers, and so you've got all those elements in spades in Golden Kamui. Unlike the Westerns that we that some of us grew up with, some of us older people grew up with, it's not a very innocent show. I mean, you don't, you don't have a bloodless killing in the middle of, of Dodge City and, you know, on, at high noon. Uh, there's there's a more, the violent is more, violence is more explicit, though it isn't, it isn't too graphic. And there's some sexual, uh, sexual content as well. Again, not too graphic, but, but uh, Totally not for kids. 
And it's, it's more like a Western from the late 60s or the 70s, one of those cynical, updated modern Westerns, kind of like the spaghetti Westerns of, 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 uh, made in Italy, for example. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Da, da, da. <laughs> so and that's, that's where Kamui is coming from. Although they do have a rock and roll theme for the intro and the outro. Uh, I, I would have liked to have it be a little bit more traditional, but, you know, whatever. The art style is pretty impressive. According to Wikipedia, Noda uses digital illustration exclusively for his manga. And from the pictures I've seen, the characters look just like, just like it in the anime. And they appear to be hand-drawn, except there's a bear in the early show, one of the early episodes that looks kind of fakey. Didn't do as good a, a job at animating, though, so a little disappointing. But for the most part, really good. Some of the, some of the cutesy aspects of anime, especially with the Sirpa, but for the most part, it's more realistic than normal. The anime version is um, from Gino Studio, or Gaino, I'm not sure how to say that. It was directed by Hitoshi Nanba and written by Noboru Takagi. There's two seasons with 24 episodes, which aired uh, from April to December 2018. In addition, there were a few extra episodes, some OVA content, uh, done in 2019. And I've also read there's a number of 30-second uh, short episodes that I haven't seen, <laughs> and that also aired, aired, that aired in 2018. There's a third series uh, slated to start in October of this year, 2020, and hooray for that. I am pumped to hear about that. Golden Kamui, the, the manga version anyway, won numerous awards, including the Mango Taisho Award in 2016 and the Tezuku Osamu Cultural Prize in 2018. It's had a number of other awards, uh, nominations, including the Eisner for Best Foreign... Uh, foreign uh, comics adaptation. Uh, though I love the historical setting of Golden Kamui, it's the characters that really make the show. Uh, besides uh, Sugimoto and uh, Sirpa, who are really uh, endearing and uh, good characters with their own strengths and flaws, there's some others, especially there's a, there's a group of people they tend to travel with, including Suraishi, who is an ex-convict who calls himself the Escape King because he's escaped from practically every prison in Japan, so he says. Uh, Kiro, Kiro Ranke, who's, a, who's part Ainu, he's got the long beard, he wears the ceremonial robes, or the traditional robes. He's kind of a, con he's a little bit shady <laughs> as, far as, uh, as far as the others are concerned. There's Tanagaki, who is a Matagi, that's a Japanese clan that are really into hunting from, from northern, northern Honshu, I believe. And he's also an army deserter who, who left the 7th Division uh, to help uh, Asirpa and make sure she comes to no harm. He promised that to Asirpa's grandmother who nursed him to back to health after he was injured, so he feels an obligation. Finally, there's, well not finally, there's tons of characters, but of my favorite characters, this one is finally Inkarmat, or yeah, Inkarmat, who's a an Ainu woman, very lovely woman, who is a fortune teller, and she kind of she kind of almost is a real almost really has the gift. She uses a jawbone of a fox. She puts it on her head, tips her head, and and the way the jawbone lands is what she uses to predict. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Pretty interesting. The villains are just as interesting, and there's there's just way too many of them, and way too many uh, ancillary characters to list them all. But I'll, I'll list some of the best ones. Well, Lieutenant Surumi, I mean, he's got a plate in his head. <laughs> he's a really weird looking guy. These scars are on his eyes, and he's he's uh, looking for the treasure, of course. And he's pretty he's pretty corrupt. Uh, there's No Parabo, who's uh, the uh, legendary prisoner who stole the treasure and murdered the Ainu. There's Edo Guy, an insane taxidermist, who will not only does stuffs animals, but kills and stuffs people and uses people's skins to make clothing. Uh, kind of creepy. <laughs> and uh, Inaga, a former doctor, a male doctor, who became a beautiful young woman uh, by eating the flesh of the most desirable victims. 
So there's a, there's a, there's a few. These villains are really awful, but at the same time, pretty interesting. As far as steampunk elements, there's some there's some technology just a little bit out of out of the time period. Uh, some guns, some skis, some uh, old timey automobiles, and so on. That no airships, unfortunately, but uh, it does it does. Um, also make a lot of use of, of magic, which, for the most part, doesn't come across as weird as real. But you know, some of the characters believe in it. Uh, the elements of horror. There, there's the cannibalism, of course. Uh, the insane taxidermist. And the weird thing is, when he makes these leather goods out of people, he actually decorates them with fingers. You would think that he would want them to be a little bit less obtrusive, but no, he's crazy. Lots of Lots of battles with stabbings and beheadings. Uh, not as graphic as a lot of animes, so it's, it's not too bad, but definitely don't want little kids to see it. Definitely not. It alternates this horror element with absurd humor at times. And I'm going to give away the, the uh, plot of one of the OVA episodes just because it's so silly and it kind of illustrates. So Suraishi uh, gets this infatuation, falls in love with this sketch of a nun who he's told was really beautiful and he's searching for her at various prisons and because she's a prison you know worker, she's like a charity worker and the sketch was kind of bad, it shows her like with little teeny eyes and a little little slit of a mouth and he's thinking oh it's a terrible picture when he finally finds her she looks exactly like the picture and that's the joke it's very very silly and there's a lot of humor of that of that manner. And also, of course, there's there's uh, a Sirpa and other characters beating up on Shiraishi because he's really, really annoying. And they only keep him around because he he's um, the only one who can get them into Akibahara prison, which is where they're trying to find Nobrabo and, and get the secret of the treasure. Also, you have a lot of exotic foods that the Ainu eat. They eat anything. They're, you know, like, you know, they heard that the Native Americans of the plains that they would eat every part of the buffalo or use it. That's what they do. With everything, like they'll they'll eat the brains and the eyeballs and the and the intestines and whatnot of, of all these animals. And they'll just they'll chop stuff into up into what they call chitadap, which uh, which is while they're chopping it, you're supposed to say chitadap, 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 which is another recurring joke because one character in particular is too cool is too cool to say it and there, there's a character who I forgot to mention Ogata the sniper uh, another one of these army deserters and we're not sure whether he's good or bad because he's pretty he's pretty cold-blooded and he's very cool his voice this is Japanese understand but from the tone of his voice he, he kind of talks like this he's very he's very mellow and a deep voice and he's he never gets ruffled by anything. He's kind of like James Bond, <laughs> and he's a he's an absolutely perfect marksman. He can he can hit anything at insane distances. So it was one of my favorite characters. There's a little bit of sexual humor as well. There's a there's a big a big guy. I think don't recall if he's a prisoner or part of the army or what his original original uh, origin was, but. He has a plate in his head, kind of like Tsurumi, but it's a smaller rectangular plate, kind of sticks out of his forehead, and he always brags about his sexual prowess, and so, so, to the point that um, that uh, Sirpa calls him Dick Sensei, <laughs> and, and admires him, though, uh, 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 though Sirpa does stay, uh, does stay um, innocent in the show. It's uh, so it's not doesn't have the creepy factor like some anime have with the young gals, although uh, Asirpa's grandmother does tell her that she's supposed to marry Sugimoto because no Ainu man would marry her because she's too manlike. She's a hunter and they wouldn't like that in the non-traditional aspect. There's even there's there's a few jokes about gay prison sex and. Uh, and uh, Suraishi kind of uh, pleasuring himself to picture that nun. <laughs> so there's kind of weird stuff in there. 
but I love it, just every every moment of it, and I'm very excited to see the new version that's coming out in 2020 and see if they finally do find that golden treasure that they've been looking for for so long. This has been my review of the fantastic and wonderful anime Golden Kamui by Saburo Noda, uh, based on his manga, or based on his manga, the actual anime is done you know, by different people, but based on his brilliant anime. And let me know if you'd like to see more of this content in the co comments below. Please like and subscribe, because that helps us get out the good word of steampunk and other historical based fiction such as this. For now, this is the Steampunk Desperado saying, Adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel, where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary.